Welcome to Gambling with an Edge with your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Bob Dancer is America's premier video poker writer and teacher. He's written 10 books, including Video Poker for the Intelligent Beginner and the best-selling Million Dollar Video Poker. He helped develop the computer software Video Poker for Winners, and in 2004, he was inducted into the Video Poker Hall of Fame. Richard Munchkin has been a professional advantage player for over 30 years and is in the Blackjack Hall of Fame. His book, Gambling Wizards, Conversations with the World's Greatest Gamblers, is a testament to the many ways you can succeed at gambling. The goal of the show is that you'll be a more knowledgeable gambler tomorrow than you were yesterday. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good evening. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. My name is Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest tonight is super host Steve Sear. Steve has been... Steve has hosted innumerable big players at casinos around the world. We'll be talking to Steve in a few minutes. We received an email at gamblingwithanedge at gmail.com about loss rebates. We said several times on this show that if you're playing on a loss rebate program, the smartest way to do it is to play a high volatility game so that you either win big or you lose big. A player wrote to us and asked, why wouldn't it be better just to play a game where he had a small advantage and just grind out the win? The answer to this is that you're usually grinding out for a fairly low percentage profit. For big stakes, it's rare that a casino offers a jacks or better game, say, uh, with enough of a promotion or a uh, slot club to give you more than a half percent advantage. A half percent advantage on a $25 game would be bigger than average. But if you're playing, say, a triple-double bonus or an Ultimate X game, which have sky-high variances, sometimes you're going to win $50,000. Sometimes you're going to lose $50,000. But if you get to keep it when you win it, and you get 20% back or whatever the rebate is when you lose it, that gives you far, far more than a half percent advantage. So, um, but it takes a personality to be able to lose. So this particular <laughs> person who wrote may not be willing to lose 20,000. He's, he's looking for this little grinding and that's the way he has to play. And if that's the way it is for you, fine. But the loss rebates is not, would not be your cup of tea. Um, any comment on this, uh, Munchkin? Um, no, not really. I mean, it's it's an area that uh, card counters especially just can't seem to wrap their heads around, um, you know, this idea of, of variance being your friend. So um, it's kind of a common mistake, um, you know, and, and actually, if you had a game where you literally had an edge, um, you know, the, the, the basically the... Uh, simulator would tell you that the optimal quit point is never. You would just never stop playing. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a, as I say, it's something that's a hard thing for most people to wrap their head around. Um, but, uh, you know, if they, uh, if they want to understand it, um, you know, there are some things out there they, they can read. There's a very good chapter in uh, James Grossjean's book uh, about loss rebates. If you ever get a copy of it, well, that's true. All right, um, when we uh, when we introduce Steve Sear, we'll give get his take a little bit on loss rebates as well. Another uh, email to gambling with an edge at gmail dot com. Ask about the lesser of evils. He's a blackjack player, and he expected to find a good double deck game when he came to this particular casino. When he got there, he found an Eight deck shoes with decent enough rules, but the double deck game had six five for naturals. So he still wanted to play, and he wanted to know which was the lesser of evils: a good eight deck shoe game or six five with lousy rules. Munch, you're the blackjack guy. Tell us. Well, um, so <clears throat> this particular player, um, there there was another problem for him, and that was that the uh, I guess the double deck game had a lower minimum bet than the eight deck game. 
Um, and this was at the Cosmo. So I don't know exactly what the blackjack rules are on the various games there. But, you know, uh, if you'll allow me to use a little bit of round numbers, um, the eight deck game is about minus 0.6, six tenths of a percent uh, when it pays three to two on blackjack. And that double deck game paying six to five is more like about 1.7. So um, the, the six to five game is more than 1% worse than uh, the eight deck game. So uh, he definitely should stick to the eight deck game. And, and in this case, he was mostly interested in uh, playing to get his comps. And uh, so it's, you know, important for him to also take into consideration that he should, you know, be playing as slowly as possible to uh, take as, sit out as many hands as possible, uh, go to the bathroom, you know, play, play while they're changing the cards, which can take 15 minutes, you know, um, but, but definitely you, you want to stay away from the six to five blackjack. Yes. And also after you lose, after the dealer gets two blackjacks in a row, volunteer for the sake of the table to sit out the next hand so it changes the order of the card so that's going to help everybody else that's that's also <laughs> i would a good sit technique. out a lot more often than that <laughs> yeah all right Find excuse you can to sit out uh we got another email that uh asked about video poker bankrolls for years i told player that if they had between three and five royals that they would usually be okay so long as the game they were playing returned more than 100 percent Wait, explain club. what that means, three to five royals. Well, a royal flush for a dollar game is $4,000. Uh, so three to five royals would mean between twelve dollars and $20,000 as a bankroll. I see. Uh, so the email asked, why it didn't matter how much over 100% you were? Well, when I gave that advice, that was the best information I had. I didn't have computer software that would allow me to figure out it better than that. Today, there are two excellent, inexpensive products that allow you to check out bankroll calculation. Video Poker for Winners is one such program, and I'll be demonstrating how to use that in bankroll calculations in my next series of classes, which begin in a few weeks at the South Point. There's also a product called Dunbar's Risk Analyzer for Video Poker. The programs attack the problem in different ways, and each has different strengths than the others. But they're both good, and for a common set of data, they come up with really close to the same answer. So, uh, Richard, do you have a comment on this? Well, I actually, I just have a question. Um, so uh, now, now that you can figure it out exactly, like for a jacks or better game, uh, where did the number actually turn up in terms of the number of royals you need? Well, I mean, did it turn up to be between three and five? And uh, well. There's a lot of things that come into consideration. One is uh, is the, re the the amount you're over 100%. So a, uh, a jacks or better game, which is 99.5%, if you have a two-thirds percent slot club, you need a bigger bankroll than if you have a 1% slot club. It oh, also matters on the variance. Jacks or better is a pretty smooth game. Double-double bonus is much bigger highs and much bigger lows. So for the same percentage return, if you're playing a game like Double Double and there are games with bigger variance than that, then you need a lot bigger amount. So those are the two factors that matter most of all. Uh, how much over 100% it is and what the variance of the okay. game is. Um, good. All right. So during the past week, uh, Richard, you mentioned something about Advantage Players and Facebook. Uh, what was that all about? Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion recently about uh, uh, advantage players in Facebook and um, uh, mostly centered around the fact that casinos, and we're going to ask Steve about this. I'm sure he can tell us more. But casinos will Google you and check your Facebook profile if they're interested in who you are, either because you're a high roller or they're suspicious of you or whatever. So um, so some people are in the camp of, you know, no advantage player should have a Facebook account. There's just no reason to do it. And I actually uh, fall in the opposite camp. Um, I think that it's really important 
to have some presence on the internet because otherwise you look too odd. Uh, unless you're over maybe, I don't know, if you're over 60 years old, then I guess it's not odd. But um, I know so some very odd-looking 70-year-old people. <laughs> but, but so, for example, when I changed my name, the very first thing I did was get a Facebook account and get a Google Voice phone number linked to that name and that, um, that person. Um, but the important thing is to make sure that your uh, privacy settings are turned on so that nobody can really see anything other than the fact that, yes, this person does have a Facebook account. Um, so, uh, but I do have friends who were identified by casinos and barred uh, by the casino using Facebook to, to turn up their picture. Um, in one case, uh, they got the name of a woman staying in the hotel, looked at her Facebook account, found the picture of the guy that was with her, and then found out who he was. You know, so so you need your friends. Uh, you need to not rely on your friends having their privacy settings. So you know, you never want to put anything on there that that could be used against you. All right, we're that'll be. I'm going to introduce Steve now, and our first question is going to be about Facebook to him. So we'll see what he has to say. Steve Sear is an independent casino rep, representing high roller players to casino all over the world. He was on our show September 22nd, <coughs> 2011, almost two years ago, and we intend to ask him different questions this time than we did last time. If you enjoy listening to the interview tonight. I strongly suggest you go back to the archives and listen to the earlier interview. Steve Sear, welcome back to Gambling with an Edge. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me back. Well, I'm, I don't know if I want my players to listen to your show or not. I know the CFOs around uh, that I work for wouldn't like uh, your show. It's interesting. Uh, you guys made some wonderful points uh, already. Mo most of my customers, by the way, 9 out of 10 aren't as educated as, as just the little stuff you've already said. Thank God. Now, Richard and I have asked our listeners for help in making up questions for Steve, and the response has actually been terrific. Right. We've offered signed copies of Whale Hunt in the Desert for the best questions. We have two copies, and the winners are going to be Diamond Mike and Dan S., and we're not going to identify them any I'll, further. I'll bring you more. If you want more books, that's not a problem. All right, good. Yeah. So then um, there, were, there were far more than two, so we can... Uh, we can easily uh, get rid my, of some my more. publisher is a little bit of a wise guy, Anthony Curtis. So I've heard of him. Yes, <laughs> I heard of him, and and the book uh, written by Deke Castleman. Deke edited Munchkin's book and four of my books, and so we uh, we can make this happen. All right, so good. So now, if a new customer approaches you, do you ever use Google or Facebook to check him out? Absolutely, but not. Again, not for the reasons that, that you uh, have alluded to. I just had uh, a brand new $100,000 player go to the Cosmo. Uh, that's one of the places I rep that I like. And um, when I Googled him and Facebooked him, I became friends with him. One, because then we'd have a bond. But two, on all his pictures, I noticed in about every third or fourth picture, he's either at a pool tournament or playing pool or talking about pool. And he's got a Twitter account, too. So what penthouse did I put him in, Bob? the one with the pool table, and he thought I was a hero. Uh-huh. So I use it, you know, if, if I see in the guys drinking, you know, Jack Daniels, that's what I have in the room. So I do it on another level just because I want to get to know his likes and dislikes. Um, there's no doubt, though, that surveillance and uh, the powers that be are checking out because, again, um, a lot of guys change their name or even try to change their appearance and an advantage player the casino doesn't want. I personally don't mind because I'm paid on theoretical. And if you win two things happen for sure, you guys, what? You bet more, you play longer, hence Steve makes more cash. <laughs> right. Right? So, yeah. And uh, now, if a player, uh, if a player uh, gets a hold of you and says, uh, you know, I want to I come in with 100000 front money or whatever, and you go to check him out just mm -hmm. to see what you can find out about him, uh, is it what's going to happen if if basically you don't see him having 
if he isn't a known casino I got it. player. G- great, but, great question. And for the um, the accounting stiffs, I call them something else in my book that we won't say on the air. Uh, if they see a brand new guy, e- even if I have this happen all the time, a guy just gets a score, or I just had a guy that turned 25 and he's a trust fund baby, and all of a sudden now he wants a couple hundred thousand dollar credit line. But if you run a central credit, which is like our TRW of gaming, uh-huh. for those of you that don't know, uh, I can see. So if a guy calls me and this happens, like the Floyd Mayweather fight's coming up, you know how many calls I have right now? I need two ringside tickets. I'll put up a hundred thousand. I run the central and I'll call Max said, Bob, are you kidding me? The highest you've ever played is twenty five grand and that was three years ago and you took four months to pay it. You know, everybody buyers are liars. You know, they all try to pump themselves up. So central credit gives me a great semblance of does he really play to that line? Does he really keep that kind of money in the bank? Because remember, if it ever gets to the bad and we have to go in front of the judge, Your Honor, I gave him the hundred thousand because he keeps low six in the bank and he's had casino credit for fifteen years and he's never stiffed anybody. So that is my Bible. If a guy wants to wire in money up front, of course I'll take a shot with him. But it's tough. You know, we only have so many penthouses. Do I put it for the new guy? And is that money really going to go to the tables or is it going to go to the strip club and the nightclub? So I don't know if that answered your question. So, so I have to do my research, and a lot of times I'll say, dude, okay, all of a sudden now you're going to bring 100 grand. What, what, tell me the story. T- tell me somebody died and left you some money, but tell me the story. <laughs> because I can count on one hand, but it has happened in my career where a guy will say, I'm going to put up a million dollars. We have a guy in town right now that has a million at about three places, and it, he, he hit a home run in the tech market, and all of a sudden he decided, I want to be a gambler. This is a guy that went from casino rate to we're going to send a private hawker to pick him up in L.A. So it does happen, but, boy, that's five times in 26 years. Wow. Now, you've been in this business more than 25 years. Yeah. How is hosting different today than it was in the 80s or the 90s? Oh. And assume you have three minutes only. I was going to say, how much question. time, Bob, is the show? You know, to be honest, in the 80s and 90s, uh, Especially in the 90s, I worked for a man named Jimmy Newman, uh, who passed away last year, a great mentor of mine. Uh, we were the kings because my department, casino marketing, was about 80 to 85% of the Hilton's bottom line. And now it's not. At the Cosmo, um, you know, the, the nightclub is making more than the casino, so it's more like a third, a third, a third, a third hotel and conventions, a third nightlife and restaurants. So, so the main reason is, is I don't get all the suites anymore, and I don't get to 8 o'clock at STK at the Cosmo. Okay, if a guy's going to blow five or ten grand in the nightclub, that host has as much pull as his casino host. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't have the, the politics and the pull that I used to have because my department doesn't earn like it used to earn because gambling is now in, you know, 48 out of our 50 states. I, I think my parents are a good example. Quick story. I, I'm from Kansas. 20 years ago when they'd come see me, as soon as they got off the plane, they couldn't wait to play the slots at McCarran in the baggage claim. Well, now they don't. Why? Because they play in Wichita, Kansas. They have a couple different casinos. Now they want to go see Celine Dion and go to the nice restaurants. Gambling is more in our culture now. Therefore, it's not a big a deal. What about just in the last... It seems to me that the the comps have, have really sort of tightened up over the last four or five yeah. years. Um, h- how has that affected you? The, the bean counters have come in and really, you know, you're talking about discounts earlier, and I don't want to get off this question, but now, you know, they don't discount dice players. Even though I had a guy that lost a million dollars, the Cosmo changed that rule on me about two months ago. No discounts on dice players. doesn't matter what you lose. And, and the casinos are starting to fall in. So in, in, in the aspect of comps, they don't want any loss leaders anymore. So I send a lot of my, if you're a good $10,000 player, you can't even check into the VIP lounge at the Cosmo. I send you downtown to the D, and I send you to the Golden Nugget. Why? Because down there, a limo still picks you up, the wife can still go get a massage, and your RFB. So it has gotten really tough, you guys. I mean, just think, if you're not, you're, you're a guy that'll blow 10 or 20 grand, you'll still have to wait in line at the Cosmo, at the front wow. desk. So, so it's just, again, my department isn't 85% of the bottom line anymore. It's 30%. What about um, getting airfare? Uh, starts at usually a $10,000 minimum. Uh, you can earn up to 5% of your bankroll, depending on your place. So the most Minimum Theo, minimum actual, minimum what? Um, uh, you could earn 5% of your bankroll. So if you're a $10,000 player, I can pay you up to $500 as long as that 500 is still within 30% of your theoretical loss. I don't want to get too technical. Okay. But so as long as you didn't, you know, drink your airfare. I had a guy the other day that had four bottles of Cristal in the nightclub. Buddy, you drank your airfare. I'm 
not going to pay it. But uh, on a hundred thousand dollar player, it's more of a set price. I can pay him up to five grand in airfare. You know, even if it's only two or three thousand, depending on where he's from. Uh, I ha- I had a friend who uh, the Mirage told him, "We will not give you airfare if you win, only if you lose." Wow, I'd love that customer. He name was and, and number. he was stuck twenty thousand. Uh, uh, I think he was stuck twenty thousand at the time, um, and and they still didn't want to. His airfare, I think, was. Um, well, it was certainly... Well, if he stuck 20 grand, 5% is a grand. As long as his comps are in line, I should be able to give him at least a grand all day long. Oh. And, and, and if they actually told him that, my gut would tell me that there's more to the story. Like he was late on a payment or he was abusive or, you know, something happened. Because mm-hmm. if they're that strict, then that's a player I can steal instantly. Right. <laughs> or they think he's a very knowledgeable player. And, and believe me, you made a great point. Advantage players, they don't want... Sure. We really play the faces, you guys, e- even for discounts. Now, a player who's played with you previously signs up to visit a casino. When he arrives, the games are not nearly what he expected. They weren't the same. Maybe the rules in blackjack have gotten a lot worse. Maybe the video poker games have been they tightened up the pay schedule. Something's a lot worse. He doesn't really want to play. Yet, he has some kind of a moral contract with you. You did bring him in and with a casino what should the player do in this kind of circumstance well good question uh first point is if you deal with a reputable host or an independent host we're going to have bob that talk way before he's going to know the rules and that there aren't going to be any surprises a good host is going to tell you look you know now the deal is changing you can't split aces four times you can't double down after a split you know if he comes in on a previous deal we have what's called uh, sots or deal sheets at most casinos so on a premium player, I'm talking about a guy 100000 and up, he's going to sign like a little contract. These are your betting limits. This is your discount at these levels. And this is when you're going to pay. Like Larry Flint. It's not a secret. I'm Larry's host. We're good buddies. I talked to him yesterday. Larry knows that on day 91, that discount does not apply. Let's just throw out 18%. That's what he gets on a million bucks. On day 91, he has to pay the whole million. As long as he pays, and he'll he'll wire that check uh, or that money on day eighty nine because that's Larry and that's cool. But yeah, so so we have deal points on all big players. But sometimes when management, and that's why I've been fired nine times, uh, will change the deal midstream. I've had that happen in my career, even during a trip, and the guy was stuck. All of a sudden, they changed the limits on him because some bean counter got scared. And they didn't. I had to go tell the player, and the player checked out, and I helped him pack, and we went to another casino. You see, I, I'm, I work for both, you guys, so I'm trying to keep both happy. And it's BS if they change it in the middle of the game. You know, I'd say, hey, sir, going forward on your next trip, we can't discount that much. But a deal's a deal for me, and, and you got to have some honor. You know, and if that's been the deal, it's just you get these guys that I call them bleeders, and right during a game, and uh, all of a sudden they'll change the rules on us. And that happens all the time. How can a player... Um you know, if if I want to have a good relationship with my host, mm-hmm. and I want to go, let's say I want to go play a video poker or a, or a slot machine, uh, how do I ask you without offending you or do this in the right way? How do I ask you, hey, what was the theoretical on the machine I just played? Uh, again, ninety percent of all my players are not that educated. And never ask that. What they'd ask is, is hey, can I get two more fight tickets? Or, you know, can I get the cabana for my girlfriend tomorrow at the pool? That's really what I deal with. You guys are on a whole nother level. When, 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 when a guy calls me and he starts asking about the theoretical on machines, I get a little nervous because I know he's going to be a complete grinder. He's way educated. The Internet's really helped a lot of players. And it, it's the same thing if a guy called and says, well, I need to golf, and then I want to take my wife to Celine Dion, and then we want to go to the nightclub. I'm like, dude, I need four hours of play a day. You're not getting in until 4 in the afternoon, then you're leaving Sunday morning. When am I going to get the play? You know, are you coming for entertainment or are you coming to gamble? That's why I love downtown, too. There's not all the ancillary stuff. I love the hard rock, you know, brag about them all day. But a guy goes to rehab all day and parties with chicks, and he's drunk in the afternoon. Now he's got a crash. Then at night he wants to go to the nightclub or the concert in Santana. I can't get the play out of him. At the Cosmo, there's so much TNA walking around. A guy, you never know when you're going to get him to the tables. I, I love the D. You can gamble and eat. That's it. 
eat, gamble. That's it. TNA is not allowed at the D. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, they have the dancing dealers, by the way. He's done a really good job of that, and the Golden Gate. But uh, downtown for me is pretty hot now. For the ten twenty five thousand dollars player, there's more value for the customer. How much competition is there between hosts to get the top players? In your last visit, you said you uh, sometimes hosted Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, so do other hosts try to lure him away? And if so, what kind of techniques do they use? Um, yes. Uh, well, particularly Michael, like he, he doesn't gamble as, as big as he used to, and I don't really handle him anymore. We're buddies, and we call every now and then. But there's a ton of competition for all the hosts because one or two big whales can help make their theoretical bonus. And, of course, on a million-dollar player, I can make 50000 on a weekend. So we're really vying for them. The great thing is once I book a customer in the great state of Nevada per contract, as long as he doesn't go inactive, which means he doesn't make a lay down for 12 months, they still have to pay me. If I book you New Year's Eve and you don't even like me, but you go back Super Bowl, I get paid. You go back Final Four, you go back Fourth of July, I get paid, I get paid. You have to be inactive for one year before they can stop paying me. So I just need to get you once. So I'm just wow. a broker between. Wow, so is between. that for, for life if they don't go inactive? Even as if long as I'm licensed there, and uh, I've been licensed since 99, sure is. I, I, I'm, I haven't been actually to the Atlantis Casino in about three years, but I get a check from them every month. Wow. So I, I found the niche, you know. So you can be an on-property host and grind it away, or you can be independent. But to be independent, one, you have to go through the the rectal exam of the Nevada Game Control Board. And number two, uh, you have to have a casino sponsor you. And just to follow the paperwork is 2500 bucks. I've never been arrested in trouble in my life. And, I, it's, you know, it was thirty grand because they went back to Salina, Kansas to check me out. I'm wow. Cu I'm curious. When you're on two years ago, you said you'd been fired nine times. But right. then today you say you've been fired nine times. Yeah. What the hell you been doing the last two years? Well, no, no, no. Well, now I'm independent, so I can't be fired. But, I mean, ah. as, as w when I was growing up in my, from age 22 to, you know, from 86 to 99, yeah, I got fired from Caesars Trice. I got fired from Desert Inn. I got fired from the Hilton in 99. Then I finally went independent. Um, I just don't work well you know, guys in the corporate atmosphere. I worked really good when it was just Tim Poster at the Golden Nugget or just Peter Morton. Or now I love Derek Stevens downtown at the D. That's a good atmosphere for me. Uh-huh. What about you, um, tipping, your, tipping your host? Uh, I know a number of uh, players who uh, tell me that they tip their hosts. Um, what does that get them? Okay, well, on the record, if when I was in charge of hosts and uh, like the senior director at the Hard Rock in charge of everybody, as an employee, hosts do not take tips, period. If you get caught taking a tip, you will be fired, maybe warned once and fired, because we don't want them to take tips because they can, that can influence how you comp or give them credit. So tips are a no-no. You know, a little gift card every now and then it's your birthday, yes. Hosts can't take tips. I'm an independent rep. I'm not an employee. I can play with my customers. I can get drunk with my customers. I can be at the table with them. So you want to tip me? Yes. You know, in my book, um, you know, the car before last was a, a gift from two players. I set them up. They did some business, and they blindfolded me and bought me a new car. So it was cool. And I claimed it, IRS, so. <laughs> uh-huh. So some of us might be interested in tipping somewhat less than a car. <laughs> <laughs> well, but so your on-property hosts, technically, I can guarantee you, are not supposed to ever, ever, ever take a tip. And I can guarantee you most of them find a way to take a tip correct if you give it to them correct all right um your uh, one of your players is blind drunk mm -hmm. and yet still firing away you and the casino both make more if he continues to play on average but a friend would take him back to his room and say let's go get him tomorrow you've got to sleep now how often have you done that kind <sighs> of thing Good question, by the way. Wow. Um, you guys have really good questions this time. Uh, and last time, too. Uh, okay, has that ever happened in my career? Of course. And have we kept them playing? Of course. Okay, um, I would say with me it's just a matter of maturity. You know, now in, in year 26, um, if a guy's blind drunk, and this happened the other night at the Cosmo, I, I took his checks. I call chips checks. I took his checks and, like, we're done here. Because it, it was bad. And, you know, it gets to a point where if they're really bad, nobody wants that anyway. And, and that, that's not a line. All my bosses, everybody at the casinos, it, it doesn't do anybody any good. And then you get in a beef with the guy. 
Um, if a guy's a little tipsy and he's look, booze is courage. Let's get that clear. Without booze, I, I don't know how the you know casinos in London. I hear we have to apply and then wait a day. And you know we need spontaneous and booze. That, that's how we make a living here in Las Vegas because everybody's partying. Um, so I say now I can I can honestly say I would pull the guy up and say hey let's go fire tomorrow because it's not going to do me any good to burn him out. I mean back in the day did we ever give people more credit when they were hurting? But that that's really tapered off too because of the economy. We really watch now the credit that we issue. And remember I don't get paid till they pay, so it does me no good to overextend a guy. A regular host gets his check every two weeks, but an independent rep I don't get paid till those markers are clear. What was the uh, most bizarre comp you ever gave somebody? Or <laughs> oh, everybody asks that. Um, then you know. ought to have a good answer. Uh, well, I, I do, <laughs> but I can't. We'd have to turn the mics off. <laughs> All you right. Know, I mean, uh, I think one, 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 one stereotype. I'd like to. I, I think I've said this in your last show. One stereotype is I think everybody thinks that my big players are, are druggies and all that. I'm telling you, in 26 years, you guys, I can count on one hand the guys that are really coked out and ecstasy and all that. My guys are addicted to gambling. Okay, that's what they want to do. They're not, they're not druggies, ever, ever. Um, one of my guys, I don't know if it's bizarre, but he wanted to uh, go to Mykonos in Greece on a 160-foot yacht. There's pictures of that, and I... You know, I had to buck up and take one for the team, and we went ten days on a yacht to Greece. We we flew to Greece, went on, and he and he had specific islands that he wanted to visit, and specific things. I don't Mykonos know if you saw is them, a you party know. island. Oh, oh, what definitely a party. Santorini's par- nearby. Did you go there too? Uh, that sounds familiar. And then he <laughs> wanted to stay at this one place one night off, and it's all this. You know, this is the guy that we would strain yogurt through cheesecloth, and I don't. To be honest, I don't know if it's the part that falls through or the part that stays in the cheesecloth that's what he wanted for his butter for his toast and <laughs> he's crazy you know but very very you know and a lot of my guys are superstitious um there's a great story in the book that was true we had um uh, an, an asian customer that brought a soothsayer with him and even though of course uh the penthouses are on the top floor he'd come in and he'd have an entourage of 30 people and the, if the soothsayer said 11 we have to stay on floor 11. Even if the 11th floor was all standard rooms, I'd have to move literally 30 people out, comp them, make them happy, and put him in there because the soothsayer said, I, you should play on 11. That really happened. And the guy lost like $2 million. I'm like, dude, fire the soothsayer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now that would be the most bizarre comp. What would be the most expensive comp? Um. More than the Greece trip, uh, I worked, I, the Brona is a place that I rep in San Diego that I think's run really well by a lot of Vegas guys. Max and Rubin's involved there a little bit. Correct, correct. And um, f- when the Super Bowl was there, when the Raiders played Tampa Bay? 2002, maybe. Okay, that sounds about right. Uh, got man. their butt kicked. Um, <laughs> correct, the Raiders got beat. Um, three skyboxes, over 300 grand I had to spend. Well, I didn't, the Barona did, thank goodness to fly the guy in boom and uh we spent three hundred thousand on uh, just for him and his entourage to go to the super bowl that's how much all those i think the sky boxes were like a hundred thousand each and he had three of them and he he was from florida but he knew everybody in san diego and he had hundreds of people there that's the most expensive comp i've ever seen wow because that was hard money it's not like a penthouse in his room that we say it's ten thousand a night but it's really made to clean it it's not like that bottle of Cristal that we say is three grand and, you know, costs us 200 bucks. This was hard money. Wow. But yet the NFL doesn't let casinos advertise uh, during the Super Bowl, but they'll take our money for skyboxes. And I guarantee at the Super Bowl, because I go to almost all of them, all the skyboxes are bought by casinos. Well, a couple of years ago in Super, when Steve, Steve Wynn was on the top of his new tower, Right. And the and his ad on the Super Bowl. So there's something in there. Oh, oh, with Encore, you mean? Yeah. Okay. So, wise guys video poker players, mm-hmm. I know one or two. They can ob- <laughs> they can obtain an edge over the house or at least play with a smaller disadvantage than most other players. How big does a video poker player need to be to interest you as to being one of your guys? And are there certain ways for you to decide that a certain player isn't the right kind of guy for you to represent? Yes, um, two, two points. One, just on an earning standpoint, if, um, 
if Bob, if you were playing $25 video poker and you were on triple, double, double, and your friend was next to you playing, you know, jacks are better, six, nine, but I'm not going to earn. And they cut down the Theo so much and they don't want those players, um, to even, uh, get comped very much. So at the end of the day, you would just have to play a ton for me to ever earn even a couple grand. And number two... Well, you, you had two different okay. games there. I can understand that on jacks are better, but on triple-double, it has a variance of 93. Okay, I was, I just, I but, was uh, just uh, going uh, out of game. Oh, triple-double yeah. is one of the huge, highly volatile games Correct. where you can win or lose a ton Right, quickly. aces with a kicker, you win a ton. If not, you're... Aces with you're, a kicker, you win 4,000 right. coins. Right. So, uh, so, so not a good example, I'm sorry, but... But my point is, is if a guy is an advantage player and playing high video poker, it doesn't really interest me, N not only because I won't earn, but I'll get a call instantly from the slot manager that says, we don't want his action. And they sure don't want to pay commission on top of his action and comps. Remember, I'm, you know, I'm bringing in new business. They want me to bring in squares, and they know. There's got to uh, maybe there's got to be some reason you don't return my phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so Don Johnson was in the news again this week. Um, basically, uh, the article I read, I think he was at Cosmo actually, um, but it, it basically he was just there partying with a lot of people, um, and he was saying that they won't let him play anymore. So I'm wondering about that because nobody ever really accused him of being an advantage player. He just happened to get lucky and win a lot of money. Exactly. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. I can tell you that what he spends in nightclubs is, is, makes him a whale, period. Uh, for, forget what he does in the casino. That guy is amazing. Um, I mean, I hate to speculate I, because that is a place that I work, but I'm guessing if they told him they don't want to play, they're just afraid that he's going to kick kick. Kick, the, kick ass and win a lot. That's the only because yeah. I've never heard that he's an advantage player ever, ever. And by the way he parties, it'd be really hard to be. Yeah, that's why it just shocked me that they wouldn't want his action. I mean, I can understand them saying, hey, we're not going to give you a rebate, but I, I mean, I would think they'd be sending a limo for him. I'd, I'd want him to play all day long in my casino. Huh. So I, I wouldn't want player... Bob, but... I'd... What is the state of, of the loss rebates? You mentioned that they no longer are, are uh, rebating on craps, but um, can players still get 20% yes. loss rebates? Uh, yeah, they, they've raised it. You know, we used to uh, rebate on $50,000 losses, then it went to 100. Now the standard around town is uh, discounts. You say rebates, I say discounts. Um, start at $150,000 loss, and that's 10%. So if a guy loses, uh, and in addition, he can still earn airfare, whatever his airfare is. So at 150, uh, we can eat 15,000 as long as you pay on time. I'm assuming that'd be 60 or 90 days at that kind of a number. And uh, we just do usually a marker reduction. Obviously and what, do you, what about, um, uh, can you get above 10? I mean, yeah. what do you need to get up to yeah. 20? So, so some guys I can negotiate 18 to 20%, but the discount doesn't start till half a million. So we'll do it that way. So yeah, I'll give you twenty percent, but it only starts at half a million. So if you lose three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand, of course that guy's smart. When he gets to four hundred, he's just going to take a shot with the last hundred because he knows it's going to be discounted anyway. Right. So, but but we we just it's just like in betting limits. You know, if you want a double debt game, you're not going to see five dollars. You're going to probably see a quarter game or hundred dollar game. Same thing. And, and those aren't my decisions. Those are what I go in and negotiate with usually the casino manager for the players huh. and again they're, they're playing faces they're going to call they're going to look at a central they're going to call other hosts they're going to find out his play i try to as a host i get my, all my customers rundowns every trip so i show them this is what his average time is this is usually his average bet on the last 11 trips he's lost eight of the 11 i mean they, they consider all those factors can we beat the guy because that's the first thing they're going to ask now, would the, if the player went to the host, went to the casino management directly and tried to negotiate a deal, what are the chances he'd be successful in getting a loss rebate deal? If he's a known player at other properties, he could get it on. If he's not, no way. They're going to tell him they don't. They, they're not. They're not going to publicize it, or they're going to say, "Look, first trip, just come in. Let's see how you play. Then we'll talk about it the next trip." They're definitely never ever going to offer. That's why you need a guy like me to go in and push it and say, look, if you want this guy, this is the only way I can get him because this is what he gets at the other place. All right. Now, your website, stevesear.com. 
Uh, is that the best way to get a hold it of is. you? It uh, is, www.stevecyr.com. And on there, you can hit contact. And uh, my partner, Jackie, looks at those every day. And a lot of people after your last show contacted me. And I try to respond to everybody. And pretty quick, you can leave me your cell. I'm always up. I don't sleep much. <laughs> what, what kind of player would be the minimum to get you? you interested you must have a pretty full stable i do uh what i try to tell people if you're local uh a nice five to ten thousand dollar uh a month bankroll and you're if you play blackjack average about a 50 to 100 bucks one percent of that you know if you're a guy that just goes out every now and then with a couple grand i can't really earn because i have minimum theoreticals that i have to hit in order to earn so i need a guy that puts up at least five to ten grand and bets 50 to 100 bucks a hand um if you're out of town, I usually tell people twenty five thousand, twenty five thousand dollar credit line, uh, and, and that helps me get you the suite up front and comp you up front and have the limo pick you up up front, especially new guy. And you know, I have more hundred thousand dollar players now under forty than over forty. It's completely flipped. Young people, I, I think they're all going to be broke by the time they're forty. But uh, everybody, it, it's in our blood now. Steve, do you handle casinos like in Asia and Australia, Europe, if, if a player wanted to go to one of those places? Um, I, I'm not licensed there, but I have friends and other reps. We all work together, and we take care of each other, just like some of them aren't licensed in, at the Atlantis IM, so we use each other. So uh, just about anywhere they want to go. I just, I'm now licensed at all the Caesars and Harris properties so uh, in Las Vegas. But uh, I, I can pretty much handle any request, especially Australia. That's pretty easy. Mm. I've got guys now that want to go to that Dominican Republic, Hard Rock, Punta Conta, or whatever it's called. Punta Conta? Uh, yeah, I have that, a, that can't be right. Uh, it can't be right. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I just had a request yesterday for that. So Interesting. Uh, now, the, the Revel in Atlantic City, mm -hmm. they had this big loss rebate program in July and they're still they're paying off on it for the next four months or so did you have anything to do with that did you send players in for it no to be honest uh i don't get requests for atlantic city even from my players that live in new york and new jersey oh uh, i just don't get any requests for that uh years ago i used to send some players to caesar's atlantic city and then trump now of course the golden nugget bought that and i do work for the golden nugget here so i could send players there but uh, i just get no ac requests my niche is definitely West Coast. Um, uh, most of my business is California, Texas, and Nevada. Primarily. Texas? What? Man, uh, Texas is amazing. They all gamble. I, I don't know if it's just me, but all my friends that are reps and that, oh, Texas oh, is amazing. Oh, you mean the players coming from Correct. Texas. I Correct. thought so, you meant sending people right. to so, Texas. Right, <laughs> so for my business model, uh, majority of my revenue in order, it goes California, Texas, and then Nevada. And have, And the majority of where you send people, is it? 90% Vegas? Correct. 90% Vegas. And, and Atlantis is nice because I just have a lot of guys in Florida and they hop over because Florida now has sports betting. So that's, they like to go over, bet the game, and gamble for the weekend. How, what percentage of your players are men? Um, I My just guess look, is 95. But yeah, you know, know what? It, it was 95 a few years ago, but no, I, I it's more like 85. I have a lot of women gamblers. I have couple big women gamblers yeah they're older uh, my my women demographic is definitely over 40 uh my biggest female players are 55 to 65 one's a dice shooter she's a day trader she comes from chicago she gambles every day so to her vegas is, is nothing she laughs at it her husband walks about 10 feet behind her <laughs> it's pretty funny actually uh now you're a uh you're a caucasian male correct so does that hurt you in getting Asian players as customers? Yes. Um, I had a partner on and off um, that speaks Mandarin. It's just they like to deal with the Asian hosts. Um, I would say the first time I ever felt any type of racism in my life was when I have two generals from Thailand that are million dollar players and the Asian host pulled me aside and said, why the why you're white boy? Why are you dealing with our customers? It was really amazing. But I had done a favor for one of their friends that lives here, and it's a long story. But, yeah, I have a couple um, guys from Thailand that are huge, and, and one uh, guy from Hong Kong that's huge, and it, it's tough. So for me to really break into the international market, if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. I've just got my 
few little whales that I deal with that trust me. How many clients do you do you deal with on a regular basis? Um, you know, I think that's another stereotype. I don't have thousands. You know, um, I have seventy active customers now that are in the hundred thousand dollar range to two fifty. There's only fifty two weeks in a year, and believe me, that keeps me pretty busy. And I have about fourteen uh, million dollar players. That means it'll risk a million in a weekend. Uh, wow. like, like Larry Flint, but you know, I don't get Larry every time. I've had him five or six times at the Cosmo, but he has a really good deal with the Venetian, so he goes to the Venetian a lot. We still hang out a lot. Um, so. And and how many players will you be hosting for the Mayweather fight? Oh, man, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, they're, they're both worth every dollar. A lot. Uh, man, 50 at least. Not Not all huge, but I mean, the worst guy will be a 25. Yeah, that'll be a great weekend for me. Uh, we'd love for that to happen all the time. That's why I love the UFC because I'm very event driven, and uh, you know the UFC. I, for as far as I'm concerned, they can do a UFC event every week because it really helps the town. Huh. All right, uh, Steve here. Thank you very much. Uh, you My did pleasure. So, so well. You're going to have to come back again. That's just uh, we didn't finish all our questions again, but uh, all our questions were different this time, and yet you yeah. still had knock on answers. So. You're going to have to come back. That's all there is to it. I'll, I'll go get it. I think there's 10 in a case. I'll go hit up Anthony. He can definitely give us a case of books, and I'll bring them by for sure because that's that's. I'm cool. sure there's more My than pleasure. 10 books in a case, <laughs> something like 80 or 100. All right, so uh, we, uh, we did get some participation, but not that much. All right, the South Point has more than 10,000 games returning more than 99%. That's more than anybody else. They have... Daily drawings for $25,000 at 8.10 p.m. in the Grandview Lounge. There's one prize of $10,000, 15 prizes of $1,000. To get the $10,000, you have to be drawn first and be present within four minutes of your name being called. Otherwise, you'll get $1,000, and the next name will be called, who will have four minutes to collect the prize. Uh, eventually, somebody's going to collect the uh, 10,000 and everybody else gets 1,000 when they have 24 hours to collect it. In previous South Point drawings, your ticket stayed in the barrel all month. Not so this time. If you can play a hundred, excuse me, a thousand dollars coin in during the day and be there at 8, 10 p.m., you'll have as good a chance as anybody else. It's not a great chance, but it's, uh, it's better odds than you're going to get at other promotions where you have a shot at winning $10,000. Free video poker classes will begin September 10th at noon in the showroom. The first class will be Jacks or Better. The schedule is out on bobdancer.com, and you can pick up flyers at the casino. At the Palms, there are drawings at 8, 10 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays with a theme of $125,000 big deal. The first five winners get between $500 and $5,000 depending on which envelope they select. Winners 6 through 10 receive 500 and they're done. There's a buyout possibility. If you get called in the top five, you may take $650 guaranteed instead of a guarantee of 500 and chances for bigger prizes. Nobody's taken the guarantee so far. The, the EV for going forward is 1250 And uh, if they made the buyout 800 or 1000 they would get people taking it. But at 650 they're not getting anybody. On Fridays and Saturdays between 8 p.m. and midnight, you receive five times drawing entries for these drawings. Play, Earn, and Win, PEW, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for the last half of the month. The theme is pigskin, where most of the gifts are related to football somehow, although the top prize is a $100, excuse me, $100 Albertsons gift card, which requires 40,000 video poker points to earn. Uh, you keep your points. The point you earn on Monday, Wednesday, Friday may be saved up and used later in the week. At videopoker.com, daily contest for the rest of the day is double super times pay, and for tomorrow will be ultimate X poker. The daily contest will then take a break until the 1st of September because they'll be having their monthly contest starting Saturday, which will be Dream Card. Dream Card is a game where you pay 10 coins per line, and periodically the last card dealt is a dream card, which converts into the best possible card for you. If you think another card is better than dream card, the machine selects, you can change it. 
Dream Card is a game where the machine intentionally teases you. If you're playing jacks or better and are dealt king, queen of hearts, jack of spades, four diamonds, and the dream card, any other king, any other queen, or any other jack is equally your best card to receive. But the machine will always select the jack of hearts. So you get a suited king, queen, jack of hearts to choose between that or a pair of jacks. Now in jacks or better, the choice isn't really close, but a lot of people don't know the right answer, and in some games, holding the king, queen, jack is the better choice. The game designers did this to make the game more interesting, which it does, because it gives you an interesting choice more of the time. These contests are a good way for you to experiment playing games you might not otherwise know. One of the biggest values of the site is you're able to practice a number of games for free so you can be ready when you go to the casino. Videopoker.com let me know today that in my classes, anybody who takes it, one of my classes this semester will get a, a silver certificate at videopoker.com. The basic membership is free. You get fewer ads on the website if you get a silver certificate, and you will get three months of that for free to try it out if you take any of my classes. All right. There are, let's go back to Steve Sear, since he didn't leave the building then he's open to more questions. Uh, last time you were on, we talked about some of your players wanting um, girls' companionship. Okay. And, but let's talk, but, so, but other than girls, there have to be some illegal or questionable requests that you get. I remember last time, you always, you always push the, I, you know. I, I so other than girls then. Okay. What other kind of illegal requests do you get? <laughs> And I wouldn't say illegal Obviously requests. Obviously, we but know you don't uh, fulfill any of these requests. Right. But <laughs> I mean, I, it, I wouldn't say it's illegal requests. I'm saying it's, I get begged every time, Stevie, give me another 30 days. I know, you know, I'm supposed to pay in 30 days. It, it, it's more those kind of requests. Like, come on, you know, just tell them I'm going to send 10 grand now. I'm going to send another 30 in November, but I can't do it now. Don't send it to the DA. That's the kind of bad talk we get. Not illegal, but, you know, and can I influence that? Of course. Yeah, I would you think know? that the, f the, f First time somebody does that, the answer is going to be definitely yes. Right. If they do that every time, then you well, need well, to you, find you, you look host. at the history with a guy and you try to work with them and, and you know stuff like that. But that's you know you, you try to keep guys from from tripping over themselves if that makes sense. You know, and especially have to really watch when guys are rounders and they come to town and you know that's the bad thing about host moves so much. You know, a guy's got twenty five at Caesars, but he, now his guy's at Bellagio, so he's got twenty five at Bellagio, and oh, now I'm at the Cosmo. You know, who's he going to pay first? A guy comes, and that happens every weekend. A guy comes to town and, you know, blows his credit lines at three or four places, and you really have to, you know, hold him back. And it's hard because there's so many players, and, you know, they're moving money around. And, you know, uh, it doesn't look like there's much recession in our town, does there, when you walk around? I mean, it's pretty packed. It is pretty packed. And in regard to the girls, I mean, don't you just put them in a limo and send them out to oh, the yeah. brothels? Uh, well, we send them out to the brothels or we send them to the strip clubs, you know. I mean, the strip clubs will send a limo for free and pick them up and comp them in because they don't have to kick back the cabbie and buy their first drink because they know then the guy will stay there. You know, Sapphires now has the day pool, and I send my players there in afternoons and limos all the time, groups of 20, 30 guys. You have bachelor parties. It's pretty cool. And now as hosts, we can make a percentage on retail which is really nice when we get a big group. Are girls considered retail? <laughs> no. All right. No, they're on their own. I know <laughs> what you want me to I mean. No, I don't want you to say anything. Actually, <laughs> I don't want you to say anything more. We're out of right. time. Thank you, Steve Sear, for being Thank here. You. Thank you, Munchkin. We'll see you next week. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes. Good night, everybody. You've been listening to Gambling with an Edge with your hosts, Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin. Subscribe to the show in iTunes, and episodes will be delivered to you automatically every week. Archived versions of past shows may be found at BobDancer.com and RichardMunchkin.com. We welcome emails at GamblingWithAnEdge at gmail.com. Bob Dancer and Richard Munchkin are both available on Facebook and welcome your questions. The sponsors for the show are the South Point Hotel, Casino, and Spa, the M Resort, the Palms Casino Resort, 
and the website videopoker.com. Join us again next week for another Gambling with an Edge. <laughs>